So have you ever had one of those conversations where, maybe you've had a bunch of them, where you start talking about something and before you know it, this thing that happened that hurt your feelings, you're actually being blamed for having a reaction to the thing that happened that hurt your feelings instead of the other person taking responsibility and apologizing for the thing that happened that hurt your feelings. And the conversation just starts to go in circles around and around and around. And before you know it, you aren't really even sure what was that happened in the first place that hurt your feelings because the whole conversation now is about your reaction to what happened. So that's, there's a lot of terms for different aspects of that. Some of it is projection, when the other person is projecting on you. Some of it is um, deflection, when they're just letting all the responsibility for what they did slide right off of them and onto the lap of the next convenient person. Um, it's called circular conversations. It can also be called word salad. There are so many different terms for the different aspects of that kind of dynamic. But today, I want to give you a word picture that can help you realize when this is happening to you. Because the one thing that is consistent through all of those different types of terms, whether it's deflection or projection or manipulation or word salad, whatever that is, is that you end up being confused, right? So regardless of which tactic the other person is using in this kind of toxic conversation, if you are feeling like you consistently end up becoming the brunt of the conversation when you were sharing something that hurt you and you consistently end up feeling foggy and confused and unsure how the conversation got from where it started to where it is now, that means you might be able to benefit from this word picture. So imagine with me that you are sitting at home on the couch and this other person, um, for the sake of illustration, I'm just gonna say it's your husband, comes over and stabs you in the leg. And it's a deep stab, it's a big stab wound, and as stab wounds do, you start bleeding. And you look up and you're like, you just stabbed me, why did you stab me? And instead of saying, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry I stabbed you, or yes, I meant to stab you, the answer is, why are you bleeding on the carpet? How dare you bleed on the new carpet? You're bleeding on the carpet. Shame on you for bleeding on the carpet. And you're sitting there saying, but, but, but you stabbed me. That's why I'm bleeding on the carpet. And let's talk about the stab wound. And they're like, no, no, we're not talking about the stab wound. Stop derailing the conversation. Let's talk about the blood on the carpet. You need to stop bleeding on the carpet. You always go bleed on the carpet and it always leaves stains and I hate having stains on the carpet, so you need to stop bleeding on the carpet. In fact, I want you to get up right now, stop bleeding on the carpet and go get one of those shampoo things, rent one of those shampoo machines, bring it home and clean this blood out of the carpet before it sets in the stain. And you know what, if that doesn't work, and then you need to go and you need to call carpet cleaners, professional carpet cleaners, and make them come here and clean up your blood on the carpet. Stop bleeding on the carpet. And everything is centered around your reaction to what was painful instead of the action that caused the pain. It's all about you bleeding on the carpet, not about taking responsibility for stabbing you in the first place. Now let's just say that time passes. You shampoo the carpet. Your wound starts to heal. Maybe you did and maybe you didn't. Go to the doctor to actually get care for your wound. It's a little infected, but it's scabbing over now. And so one day you're sitting there in the living room and he comes back over and he reaches over and in one big scratch, takes his fingernails and rips the scab off. And what happens? You're bleeding on the carpet again. And immediately, as you recoil from the 
pain and the shock and the unexpected action of ripping the scab off of the wound, you're like, ow! And he looks down and he says, now you're bleeding on the couch. You're bleeding on the carpet and the couch. How dare you? We've had this conversation before. You are not supposed to keep bleeding on the carpet. And now you're bleeding on the couch. I can't believe you are so irresponsible. I can't believe you keep doing this, he says. And then you say, look, it's, it's because you stabbed me and I haven't healed yet. It's still really sore and you just ripped the scab off so it's still bleeding. And then he says, why can't you let that go? Why are you so bitter? Why can't you forgive me for stabbing you? You know you deserved it. Why won't you just leave the past in the past? And you're like, but I can't leave the past in the past because I'm actually actively bleeding right now. So it's not really past because the wound is open and it's bleeding. And I'm sorry it's on the couch. I'm sorry it's on the carpet. I didn't mean for it to be on the couch and the carpet. And it actually wouldn't be on the couch and the carpet if, if my scab hadn't gotten ripped off. But I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I'll try to shampoo it. I'll clean it up. And he says, yes, you better. Because you are a terrible wife. I can't believe you keep making up these excuses. You keep hobbling around like you are some kind of cripple. You keep bleeding all over everything and leaving the stains there for people to see if they come over. And you're just such a drama queen, always asking people for sympathy for the big old scar on your leg. And really, you should just wear long pants and stop talking about how you bleed. Why can't you just be like all the other women who would be so happy to be married to me because I'm awesome and you just sit around bleeding on the couch and the carpet? Time passes again and at some point this keeps coming back up and every time the conversation is diverted from the stabbing to the bleeding. And as you bleed, once in a while, especially when you say, I'm going to go to the ER because it's infected, there's red streaks up my leg, it's never been able to heal because the scab keeps getting ripped off, there's scar tissue forming but it's not healthy, there's pus underneath, I'm losing sleep because of the pain, and when he realizes that you're ready to go to the doctor, you're ready to go and get help, then he curls up on the floor and rocks back and forth and cries huge tears and says, I was so wrong. I'm so sorry you got blood on the carpet. I'm so sorry you couldn't control your bleeding. I'm so sorry for whatever part I had in you keeping on with the carpet stains. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'll do anything. I'll do whatever it takes to make us happy again. And then you are so moved by the crocodile tears. You are so, you feel so guilty for causing him so much pain. You feel so shamed for being a terrible wife, for, for making him cry, for bleeding. I mean, surely a stronger woman wouldn't bleed when this happens to her. Surely someone else would be able to keep it from getting on the couch and the carpet where people could see. Surely someone else would be able to clean it up faster and heal faster and not have this ongoing problem. Surely someone else would have been able to anticipate his anger so that he didn't stab you in the first place because if you had just known ahead of time that he was in that kind of a mood you could have managed the circumstances or not asked for the grocery money or not shared that your child was having a hard time that day or whatever it was that you did that made him reach over and stab you in a fit of fury in the first place, but you didn't. And so surely you must be the problem here because after all, it's your blood on the carpet. It's your blood on the couch and it's your faint blood stains gathered up over years of 
on and on and on over and over again. And they never quite come out of the carpet and the couch. And every conversation ends up being about your bleeding problem instead of his stabbing problem. Next time you feel like you are caught in this vortex, remember that it is normal to bleed when you are stabbed. And the right thing to do when you have been wounded is to go to the ER, not to have a conversation with the person who stabbed you about whether or not it really happened, was really intended, or was your fault for bleeding.